President Donald Trump spent the weekend venting venom at a bewildering list of targets even as much of the rest of the world was still trying to come to terms with a true outrage the carnage wrought against Muslims in New Zealand. In a stunning display of personal grievances aired on Twitter, Trump demanded the return of a supportive Fox News host who was missing from her usual spot on Saturday after verbally attacking an American Muslim lawmaker. He escalated his beyond-the-grave feud with late Senator John McCain. He complained at being lampooned by NBC's Saturday Night Live. Trump also fulminated against the Russia investigation and radical left Democrats and took shots at an Ohio union boss. It isn't that it is unusual for this most unconventional of presidents to hit out at his foes on Twitter. But this weekend's tirade came across as even more jarring given his tepid tone on Friday when he said that he didn't think white supremacy was a growing global problem after the attack on two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand, that killed 50. And Trump did little to follow through on a request by Jacinda Ardern, New Zealand's prime minister, that he show love and sympathy to all Muslims. The president's refusal to be pushed into a more vehement condemnation of white supremacists after a history of racially charged and anti-Muslim rhetoric put the administration on the defensive. I don't think anybody can say the president is anti-Muslim, acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney said, when confronted with evidence like Trump's demand to ban all Muslim immigration during the 2016 campaign and a remark that Islam hates us. Mulvaney, speaking on CBS Face the Nation on Sunday pushed back on the idea that every time something bad happens. Folks who don't like Donald Trump, blame it on Donald Trump. On Fox News Sunday Mulvaney said, the president is not a white supremacist. I'm not sure how many times we have to say that. Mulvaney's comments did not explain why the president has often had a chance to vigorously condemn white supremacists, for instance after the far-right marches in Charlottesville, Virginia, and has not done so. His implication that people who criticize Trump for such behavior are effectively accusing him of inciting horrific violence himself blurs the argument in order to shield the president. Most critiques of Trump's rhetoric do not specifically say he caused outrages like the one in New Zealand, but question whether he has a responsibility, given that a president has often been seen as a moral leader, to do more to condemn such hateful ideologies 